planning to build a house, you'll generally be faced with two options, a turnkey contract or a progress payment contract. We're going to talk today about progress payment contracts. Thanks for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe below. All of the ad revenue that we'll generate from these videos will go to local New Zealand charities. So you're looking to build and your two main options are generally turnkey and progress payment. The key difference is when you settle on the property, when you take ownership of the property. With the turnkey, the developer builds the property and at the end of the development, you purchase it from them. With a progress payment, you buy the section and the builder comes and builds the house on the land while you own it. Typically, if you compared two identical contracts, you would find that the progress payment contract is cheaper than the turnkey because the developer is paying the interest on the loan while they build it. But on a progress payment, you own the section, you're paying interest on the mortgage, and the builder just comes and builds your house. Now it's called a progress payment contract because the builder will send you an invoice at specific and pre-arranged progress points in the build. Typically these are when the concrete slab gets laid down, when the frames go up, when the cladding goes on, when the roof goes on, and when the inner walls are done. Now they can vary from contract to contract, but the typical one would have six or seven steps in there where you will be given an invoice of $50,000, $60,000, you give it to the bank. The bank knows that invoice is coming because they've seen the contract already. The bank releases that money and you pay the builder. Now, sometimes the bank will pay the builder, but generally the bank doesn't like shifting money out of your bank account. They prefer that you do that for obvious reasons. Now, there's one thing to watch, and this isn't to do with the builder, but scams that have gone on with progress payments in the past. There was one scam a couple of years ago where scammers hacked into a builder's email, sent an invoice to the client, but changed the bank account number to their bank account and received the big lump sum of money. Obviously, it doesn't happen very often or we'd hear about it more, but it's always good to check the invoice check that bank account number is the same as it has been in previous invoices. It may not even need to be a scammer, it might just be a rogue employee. Always check the invoices as they come through. Your mortgage broker will check their invoices as well, and so will the bank. So let's put in those extra layers of protection. Not a thing you'd have to worry about, but just something to keep an eye on. As the build continues, the mortgage will grow. It will generally stay on a floating rate while it grows. Otherwise, you'd end up with 60,000 fixed for one year and then two months later, another 60,000 fixed for another year. They, the banks generally like it all to stay as floating and at the end of the contract, you can fix it for however long you like in one lump sum or, or two lump sums. Now, the builder generally wants the last sum of payment to be paid upon practical completion. This is where a certificate says, we, the builders, have done everything we need to do. We're just waiting for code of compliance. Please send us the last payment. The bank does pay on practical completion sometimes, but often will want to see the code of compliance at the end to make sure it's been done. So this can often be a bit painful. It's good to know early in the contract when the builder will want that last payment and talk to the bank about that early. One thing I would definitely get you all to do is get a lawyer to check the contract. Make sure the payments make sense. Make sure you're not paying for 90% of the home when only 30% has been done. The bank won't like that and you shouldn't like that either. Check your progress payments. Make sure they are relative to the amount of work that's been done and the value that's been added to the house. Because if a builder goes out of business, Halfway through the build, you want to make sure you've only paid for what's been done. Now, I've been talking a lot about negative stuff. Progress payments are actually a really cool way to build. Just make sure you check the contracts. The banks love them, particularly if they're from a registered master builder or a licensed building practitioner. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit subscribe. We'll talk to you next time.